In this segment here, what I'd like to do is review a couple things. One would be the option screen, the feature screen, but I also want to show how we take a laptop to the field to do the programming of the lock and how we take our DTM or data transfer module to the door. The data transfer module basically allows you to be PC free. You can be have a desktop in your office, you can take the data transfer module, connect it as I have it connected here. What you're able to do is you can program up to 200 locks in one trip. So think of this unit as having 200 mailboxes in it. Each mailbox represents a lock in your system. What's really great about the DTM product is the fact that I don't have to take a laptop to the door. It also means that I can empower someone else. If I had Heather, we've been picking on Heather today, if I can take Heather and I can say, hey Heather, here's a list of doors, here's the data transfer module, all she has to do is plug it in, enter a set code number, and watch the prompts on the screen, and then she can travel from door to door to door. Terrific application in a university application where we have student help during certain times of the year. So let's show you how to do it. First of all, what we want to do is we want to show you these two icons up here. The feature screen. The feature screen basically is, is the uh, programmable features of a particular lock. And keep in mind that these are lock by lock specific. So for each uh, feature screen, I've got to open up each individual lock. Another reason why we do what? We clone locks. So when you create that very first lock, what you do is you set up all the features, all of the options, all of the schedules, all of the people, and then I clone everybody. So from here, the lock ID, the pass time, that simply means that the lock's going to be unlocked for three seconds. This is where I can perform certain types of functions. Maybe I want to have group two toggle passage mode. Simply means I'm going to set it up as a classroom lock. Group two user enters code or card, lock unlocks, presents it again, it relocks. Uh, or in certain instances, we, what we want to be able to have happen is we want group two to unlock the door, but someone else to relock it. That would be that function there. We also can set the lockout attempts. In other words, after six attempts, the keypad locks out in 20 seconds. And what that tells me, because it records a keypad lockout on the auditor, that someone's been sitting there playing with the lock. This tab here, Relay Functions, means that whatever I want the relay to perform. Now keep in mind that uh, virtually all of our locks, there are two that don't have a relay, but virtually all of our locks have a Form C dry contact in it, meaning that I can wire that to some other type of product. We can have it shunt an alarm system. We can have it activate a CCTV camera. And what I want to be able to do is I just simply choose what function. Failed ent entry attempt, what I want to have happen is that upon a failed empty entry attempt, the camera goes off. Or lock by schedule, unlock by schedule. These two functions simply means I have it wired to a CCTV camera, I want to trip it, and I want to turn it off. Or sh I want to turn an alarm system on and off. The next button here deals with the remote. Keep in mind that we have a two-wire remote release on every single lock except two. And what that, or except one. What that basically means is that if I take 22 gauge wire and run it from the lock itself across the door back to a receptionist desk, I can wire a two-wire remote door button, a doorbell button basically. And when I'm sitting at my desk, I can press the doorbell button and I can release the door allowing me to basically buzz someone in. The great thing about that is, is that in most applications you have to use a powered strike or magnet, which means I have a strike or a magnet, a power supply, and then the wire running back to receptionist desk. With the Trilogy Locks, you don't have to do that. It's all pre-built in. Okay, that pretty much wraps up the feature screen. The option screen is right here. And what we're going to do here is, this is just where you can set different types of options where we can set the uh, screens from the custom field. We can use an ambush code. Ambush code simply means that if I hit two digits prior to my code, I'm going to get a silent alarm if I've wired that. Okay, in the option screen, the three tabs, that pretty much shows you in the standalone series what options and screens are available. Once we get into the network screen, what you'll see is a couple of these areas here that are grayed out because they only pertain to the wireless locks or the network series. Okay, from here what we want to be able to do is we're going to jump back into our software and we're going to utilize first the data transfer module, DTM for short. We have a DTM3 as our most current version. Uh, if for some reason you have a DTM2, if you've upgraded to 4.1.88, which is on the web currently, all you have to do is contact Alarm Lock Customer Service, request an SE-DTM chip, 
And what that simply means is that we're going to give you a firmware chip that you're going to be able to upgrade the DTM2 and turn it into a 3. It's free of charge. So let's show you how to operate the DTM. You'll notice on the icon button up here, we have a DTM screen. We're going to open that up. And you'll notice that I have two locks preloaded into the unit itself. What we're going to do is the back door happens to be, let's make sure we've got the right doors. So there's the front door. When we lock, open up that door, it shows the front door is 3500. The back door shows it's a 5300. That's the lock I have up here today is the 5300. Let's go back to the DTM screen. And what you'll notice here is that I have the functionality of three things. Receive a program from the lock send a program to the lock or receive the auto lock. What we're going to choose here, and we're simply going to choose it by selecting it by putting the check mark here, is I want to take the programming information. Let's go back. What I've done here in the DTM, I want to send all of this information and program my lock now. And I'm going to do that via the DTM. So we're going to utilize the data transfer module to program the doors. This way I don't have to take the laptop to the door itself. All we're simply going to do here is make sure that the DTM is in PC COM mode. If you don't see PC COM mode, you're going to have to press the button multiple times to get to the PC COM mode. I'm going to come down here and hit the button that says Program DTM for Selected Locks. Keep in mind, I have one lock selected. We're going to hit the button here. It's going to ask me as a reminder to make sure the DTM is in PC COM mode. I'm already there. You can also see up here down at the bottom is it's going to tell you that it's communicating and what it's doing during the communication process. Down here, you're going to see the status. The status means that something's happening, it's rolling. And that means that you've got clear communication, that you did a successful COM port test, you got the loop back, everything's ready to rock and roll. All we have to do now is just wait for it to go through its process and keep in mind, that the DTM has the ability to program up to 200 locks. So I could come here, set up 200 locks, go take lunch. When I came, come back, I'm able to have my DTM ready to go. Give it to Heather. Heather's going to travel from door to door, plug it in. All right, so now what we've got is we've got the DTM ready to go. Now, in real life, I would disconnect. I would travel to the door. In the training exercise, I have everything right here for me. All I'm going to do is plug it in. Now, the key is I haven't set this lock up yet to accept the DTM. Earlier in the segment, what we talked about when setting up a basic system is that the DTM is an actual user. We refer to it as a parking spot. It's user or parking spot number 299. The first thing that I have to do is I have to get this lock ready to accept the DTM when I plug it in. So let's do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the master code that we have in the lock. In this case, it's been preset to 654321. So I'm going to do that. 654 Three, two, one. Green light. Hit the AO button. When I do that correctly, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a double green beep. And every six seconds, the LED will blink red or green, indicating we're in programming mode. From there, we're going to do programming steps. In order to add the DTM as a user, and keep in mind this user 299 uh, or parking spot 299, however you want to refer to it, is all commands start with AL and end in star. This happens to be command number two, so let's do that. AL, 2, AL, user 299, 299, AL, program in the code, 299, start. Once we do that, we're going to get a double green beep affirming that it was accepted. And then from here, we can simply wait two minutes of inactivity. The lock will exit out of programming mode, or by holding any key, we can force it to exit. And that's it. Okay, now we're ready to go. So I would have my DTM disconnected from my computer. I would come up here, plug it in. What's important is the DTM is polarized. We have a tab here. The tab is left or black. So let's plug it in. It's right underneath the keypad. We want to make sure is on the very first lock, we have to select the door address number. Let me explain. If you look back at our screen here, what you'll notice is that under ABC General Hospital, I have door one and I have door two. That means that I have to be able to identify, the DTM needs to identify where I'm at. It's not going to know front door or back door, it knows a number. So what we have to do is we have to send what we call an encryption key from the software through the DTM to the lock itself. That way, each time on subsequent visits when we plug it in, it's going to recognize it as lock number two. So let's do that. 
We're going to come down here to the DTM, and what we want to be here is we want to have door select mode. Currently says lock mode, yes or no. Let's press no. Now it's going to say door select mode. We're going to press yes. And what's going to happen here is if I've loaded multiple doors, it's going to give me a choice of which doors to choose when I get to the door. This happens to be door number two. So what I want to do is I'm going to press select, I'm going to hit go, and I'm going to enter the code 299. And when I do that, what you're going to read on the screen here is it's analyzing. It's going to detect door number two, and then it's going to start sending the information. It's going to pull that information out of the programming packet. And what's going to happen is it's going to send all that information. It will tell you when it's finished. And then once it's finished, we just simply go from door to the next door to the next door to the next door. And we're now done. Okay, so we talked about two ways to send programming to the lock. What we, just what we just demonstrated was how to use the data transfer module or DTM. What I also want to show you, and, and quite frankly a lot of people use this method, is they have a laptop with software loaded, they're able to be completely mobile, and they're able to take and program the lock using a PCI cable, which I already have connected to my computer, and simply plugging it in. And it's a very simple process. We're going to do this door by door. We happen to be at the back door, so when I come up to my software, I'm going to double click the back door in my account tree and I'm going to get the lock data screen. And from here, you'll notice that I've got it completely set up. All my users, they're enabled, all set to go. So what I want to do here is this button here, send receive, allows me to initiate the programming. First step is hit the send receive button. I want to send to lock and I'm going to get another pop up here and it's going to ask me what do I want to do. I can simply choose all or I can choose one of these different uh, functions where I just want to send users, I can just send users, I can just send the schedule, just the features, etc. On initial programming, what I want to be able to do is I want to send all. Once we get to this point here, we're going to plug the PCI cable in, and remember it's polarized. The little tab here is black, so let's plug that in. Now, what's unique about this is the data transfer module is not here, so what I have to be able to do is I have to do one of two things. And I'll show both methods. First thing is, I have to put the lock in programming mode so that I can open up the data ports. I simply do that by entering my master code. Three, two, one, green light, hit the AO button. Once I do that, what happens is I'm able to get the lock in programming mode. We're ready to go. The command to open up the data jacks or the ports is AL58 star. So I'm going to hit the start button on my software. I'm going to press AL58 star. And when I look at the software, I'm going to get a communication. I'm going to see it's communicating, and I'm going to get the status that shows that it is rolling through. And those are very important because if I wasn't getting the status, if I wasn't getting the numbers to roll through, that means I don't have communication. I need to go back and double check the COM port to make sure that it's set and I get a loop back past. It also is going to tell you up here that we're dealing with which model. This is the PDL 5300, meaning it's double sided. Firmware version is 53, and the lock ID is 2. And guess what? Lock sent successful. So that's how you take a laptop to the door, and we simply do that by plugging the, lock, the, lock, the laptop in through the connection, and we put the lock into um, programming mode. The other method we do is we come up here to the global user screen. Instead of having to give out my master code to Heather, I'm going to give her the laptop, but I don't want to have to go through the process. We have a shortcut. And the shortcut allows us to plug it in, the laptop in. And we can treat the laptop as a DTM by entering in what we call a PC upload download code. And how we do that is we're going to come here to add administrative users. We're going to come here to the PC download code, and we're going to give it a PIN number. Let's make it 888. Once we do that, we hit accept. We're good. The thing that we have to do the very first time, however, is we have to manually program that into the, the lock. The PC upload download code, like the DTM, is an actual user in the lock. That happens to be user number 298. So let's set that up in the lock. We're going to put it in the programming mode using our master code. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Green light, logo button. 
Again, the command to add a user is command number two. We're going to start with AL and end with star. So it's AL2 AL, user 298AL, and the PIN number we've chosen is 888 star. Now we're good to go. Green light, press any key to exit programming mode. We're going to get a double green light. We're ready to go. Now what this allows us to do is it allows us to plug the PCI cable directly into the lock just like we did previously, but instead of having to put the lock into programming mode using my master code, we simply can come up here to the back door, hit send receive, and this time let's receive from the lock, and what we want to get is we want to get an event lock, the, the audit trail. We're going to hit start, and our code is 888. We hit start, 888, get a green light. What you'll notice on the screen is, and you see how quick that was, is we now have an audit trail. When you look on the screen, what you're going to see is you're going to see all of the electronic transactions. At the lock, we performed add or delete or change user codes. That's when I added user 298 to the lock itself. You can also see it was entered from the primary side. Now, what's unique about this lock is because it's double-sided, we have a primary side and we have a secondary side. Uh, that also means that you can set it up so a user can only get on one side or the other, and that's all done through the software. But the, the lock screen or the event log viewer will tell you everything that's happened at the lock, including schedules, master code, no, the DTM is always considered a no pass, and what side of the door it enters from. So, what we've shown you is how to use the data transfer module, how to load it up, how to take it to the door. What we've also showed you is how to take the laptop to the door two ways. Plug it in, put it in programming mode, enter your logo 58 star or AL 58 star, or better yet, on all models except the DL3000 and DL2800, you can assign a PC upload download code, that's user 298. Once I set that in as keypad programming the very first time, I simply then can plug the laptop into the door, into the lock, enter the 298, 98 code which is 888 and I treat the PC at that point in time as a DTM. I hope that you found this segment helpful in how to program your locks using the data transfer module or the PC. If you have any further questions feel free to contact us at alarmlock.com. Check out my blog on Tech Corner. Thank you.